despite the fact that it was first described decades ago, most people had never heard of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. In fact, I think it's true to say that um, many doctors uh, still don't really understand what SIBU is. Our understanding of our gut biome, the literally trillions of microorganisms which live in our gut, is still very much in its infancy. And there's far more that we don't know than we do know. But what we do know is that we live in symbiosis uh, with all of these organisms which live in our gut. And we depend upon them for our health. They help us digest our food and they are very important for gut health. I think in recent years, it started to be understood that when you get disturbances of the normal balance of microorganisms in the gut, that can cause ill health. And it can cause some specific symptoms. So I think increasingly people recognize that many people who have irritable bowel syndrome or are told they've got irritable bowel syndrome actually will have a problem with their gut biome. This condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Usually we have uh, lots of bugs in our mouths and our throats and to some extent in our esophaguses. And we have lots of bugs in our colons, the large bowel at the end of the gut. But a bit in the middle, the small bowel is usually relatively sterile. There aren't very many bugs there. And part of the reason for that is that in the stomach, there's lots of acid and that helps to sterilize the food that we eat. So normally, the number of bugs in the small bowel is limited. When people develop small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, what happens is that you get a colonization of the small bowel by bacteria usually, but also other organisms as well, which shouldn't normally be there. And those bugs tend to be the sort of bugs which you find in the throat and mouth or in the colon. And that imbalance then can present in a number of ways. As I said a little bit earlier, that very often can be irritable bowel syndrome. And that can present either with constipation or with loose stools and, and, and diarrhea even, dependent upon the exact balance of different bugs in the bowel. But increasingly, we're also beginning to understand that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can actually cause symptoms in the stomach and symptoms in the esophagus. If you've got lots of bugs in the small bowel, which are fermenting carbs, that will can create bloating. It can create abdominal pain associated with the bloating. And because that gas has got to go somewhere, uh, some people will find that they belch quite a lot, particularly after they eat. And so we know now that increasingly patients who present with reflux type symptoms can actually not necessarily be caused just by reflux, but it can be caused by small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We do recognize that two principal causes are the use of antibiotics and almost certainly antacid tablets called PPIs, which certainly change the gastrointestinal biome. So we very often see patients who've perhaps had reflux symptoms, have been treated with antacid tablets with PPIs, then develop symptoms with bloating and belching, and that then can make their reflux worse. So it can be difficult sometimes to disentangle whether the primary driver for their symptoms is gastroesophageal reflux disease, whether it's SIBU, or whether the SIBU is developed on the back of treatment for, or for reflux, or whether perhaps SIBU is developed in isolation, and that's the primary cause for their symptoms. Most importantly, always having in your mind that this problem with the gastrointestinal biome with SIBU may be responsible is really, really important because it's forgotten so often, people don't think about it. And because also in our experience, treating patients who've got reflux symptoms, if they've got SIBU with PPIs, will very often make things worse rather than better, or at the very least, may well end up being unhelpful and not solving the problems. And if we suspect somebody has got small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, we will offer them a lactulose hydrostroke methane breath test, uh, which will assess whether or not there's excessive uh, amounts of exhaled hydrogen or methane in the breath, and then that will help us uh, reach the right diagnosis. The treatment for SIBU uh, usually involves a short course of specific antibiotics 
and then a dietary modification, usually withdrawal of FODMAPs from the diet for a, a period of time. Sometimes that fails to work. Sometimes we will add a drug which increases the motility in the gut, makes the gut work better. In situations where we, we fail to eradicate SIBU using standard treatment, we may even suggest what's called an elemental diet. The key thing with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is to understand Firstly, that it can definitely present with symptoms similar to reflux, and that two, you should always think about it as being a cause uh, for reflux symptoms, and people should have it in their mind uh, to ask the right questions and do the right tests.